Welcome back to What's Hot in Tucson 2021, day seven of eight extravagant days here. Our next guest, we're shooting back from, from Munich, Germany. We're going back to Tucson, Arizona, and we've got Mary Fong Walker and Bill Bessie on the line with uh, Jewel Tunnel Imports. Uh, Mary plugged in with us last week when she was talking about the... Oh, oh gosh. Rock Dot Show. Rock Dot <laughs> Show. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> and we're happy to say that this show is actually broadcasting, I think, on four different channels on the Rock Dot Show. So we're really happy that we were able to work with Jolien and get that working. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren and Peter. Welcome to the show, Mary Bill. Hey, so good to see you going? Going? Good morning. Morning. All right. What do you guys got to show us over there at La Fuente? A rock show, I think. You know, <laughs> maybe a few here or there. What we'd like to do is show you the rock collection. Uh, we moved everything from Rock's Home over here to La Fuente. And Bill's the curator of the collection. As you can see, we have a lot of rocks here. And I'd like to let Bill open the safe to show you the treasures that we have inside. So, so wait a minute, wait a minute. You had a huge auction of rock stuff you've been selling rock stuff at tucson for the last couple of years how can there yeah. possibly be anything left uh there's a lot left because it was rock <laughs> because it, it was, was rock, rock and because he could keep everything here's a picture that's the vault that we have this is the collection room Wow. And when people ask us, can you find such and such that was in Rock's collection? We have to say, well, wait a minute. It's going to take us a while. And you're right. We have, we have sold things in auction. We have been selling all year round live since the pandemic started. But as you can see, we have a lot of minerals still left. Bill's down there. And he's going to open the safe. He's opened the safe. And, uh, but for example, uh, rock like verisite. Somebody asked us the other day, do you have any verisites left in the collection? Because we sold some at Tucson last time. Uh, yeah, we have a few. <laughs> and, and we were talking the other day and, and some of the ones you've got actually have some amazing provenance. Yeah, well, this one, I'm gonna hold the label up. That was collected by Art Montgomery. Oh, okay, wow. so that's, that's this specimen right here. Mm -hmm. Complete with a rock courier label and explanation exactly. on the back, I'm sure, of the story behind the piece. And, and then of... I was discovering there was this lovely piece. Look at the blue in this. Oh yeah. Okay, polished on one side. Well, then we looked up the label let me put it down. Oh, it was collected by Ed Over. <laughs> I love it. You can actually shop for minerals by provenance here. <laughs> yeah, and here's one. This was in Fred Poe's collection. Fred Poe. <laughs> That's excellent. And of course, he would have one. It's an end cut with all... And there's the rocks label on the back. With circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was. Exactly. <laughs> and the reason why Rock started collecting these since he started collecting and then he kept adding and then he added Dick Houck's collection to his collection. And so we have a lot. So I'm gonna go over to Bill and he's going to show you a few things in the safe. Yes, we sold things at the auction, but you know what? Rock had a lot of rocks. There's 40,000 pieces in the collection. Oh my God. This is just one drawer. Now the red dots indicate that Jeff Scoville has taken a photograph of it. Oh, great. He's been and in here we have some historic pieces. Bill, do you wanna pull something out and talk about it? Well. <clears throat> There's a little woo light, uh, very gemmy, but oh, yeah. it came out of Wards and then to Vox and then to Rock. 
Oh, wow. So, Bill, can you move your hand on the other side of the specimen so we can see the specimen better? There we go. And it's got it's got little rocks, little ring tag on there too for the things Why? that were too small to put a label on. The donut. Yep. So that's an old piece, then, right? Oh the yeah. Ward to Vox and yeah. 18, turn of the century, 1800s, 1900s. Yeah, no. But some of them are more, more recent, like this nice uh, Energite twin. Oh, yeah. That, uh, Where that from? Rocked out in the 80s. Bill, what's the locale on that? Kirabilka. And Rock loved every piece that he could. And then we had, we've been spending the time cataloging the stack of minerals that he hadn't gotten around to. Oh my gosh. Wow. How many there has was, that been? Well, there are literally thousands of pieces. I don't know if I can see this. Let me get my hand. Oh, look at the little twin. It's a twin. Dallin, it's a twin. <laughs> and that was from from the Pumba pit. No, Praha pit. Wow. One of the things that's wonderful about working with this collection is how much documentation there is in terms of locality, in terms of provenance. Uh, the one thing we are having to do is we're having to match up. That's a wolfenite from Los Lamentos, I think. Well, if I can get the tag out of there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 3485 indicates it was done a while back, and it looks like there's an old label with it too. Well, actually, though, but it's, you know, it's Crystal Caverns. That was Tom Palmer's operation. Yeah. With Ken Roberts. Uh huh. So what's neat is that we do have a lot of history. You can kind of get a sense of when it came out of the, the ground, who has handled it over time. Uh, wow. I don't think we need, need to see the label on this one to know where it's from. <laughs> it looks like the one that was in the painting that Tama just showed us a picture of. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I think she's Rock drooling right now if she's still watching the show. Yeah, Rock uh, basically imported thousands of these in the day and sold them wholesale. Oh, I don't my. know where they've all gone. Ooh. Isn't that cool? And that's not a barite or anything. That's a fluorite. That's a fluorite. Yeah, no, that's one of the weird modified ones. It's a German one. Oh, but it's from Germany. And that, that number places it back in the 1970s that he got it. Or, wow. Oh. And of course, it just happens to be another Vox piece. So that dates to the eight, late 1800s, 1910s. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's got some history on it, too. Yeah, so what's, what's fun is for us right now, we haven't seen these things in a zillion years. We put these away thinking there was going to be another auction. And then COVID hit. So we closed up the safe and started selling on the internet to people who wanted things from Rob Cruz's collection. And we haven't, this is the first time I've looked at a lot of these since then. Yeah, cute little. Oh. Where would we be without Dioptase and Wolfenite? <laughs> what an incredible combination. Is that a tiger piece? Oh, no, no, no. It's a piece. It's a map piece. It's a map. And of course, Rock was one of the main importers of Dioptase in the day. So he had his pick of whatever he wanted. The rule with Rock was whatever he wanted, he kept because he could. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bill, if you could uh, let us know the locale of each piece for, for our viewers out there. That's a champion mine, California, mm -hmm. White Mountains. 
And was that when he was collecting out there? I don't know if he collected this. I don't think he, I'm not sure he went to that mine. Uh, he did have a uh, field collector do some work for him though. Got it. If you guys see anything you want us to stop on. The Japan Law Twin to the left. Further left. This one? It looks like yeah. Nuevo, Nuevo Mundo. Yeah. yeah. Looks like there's two of them on there, or is that just the, the angle of the, the camera? Yeah, nope. there's, there's that one. I believe there's another one hiding in here. But right now, I can't find it. I mean, I think one of the really cool things about Rock's collection is he saw so much of the material. So what you're really seeing is the cream of the crop. And if he missed something and someone brought it up to buy it from him and he really liked it, he would put it in his own box. Not that so it this is an yeah, this is an oddity out of the Juan Salah mine. Oh, just there's mm -hmm. the light tights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he, he put things in his box that you were going to buy, Lauren, and yeah. I was going to buy, and I think everybody. And I think, what, didn't he do it to you when you were six years old? Yep. Yep. I learned my lesson <laughs> that it doesn't matter how cute you are. He and, liked the rock. And, and it didn't even help that you were wearing a Crystals Not Pistols t-shirt from the first edition. <laughs> he still did it to you. Now, this is a copper from Sumab. Oh, wow little bit of cooperite hanging in there you know rock's visual data banks were just unbelievable he went to museums everywhere he could he went to shows everywhere he could uh he had very little patience for people who said oh this is the best of the this is the best of this mineral that's ever been because he could sit there and run off 20 or 30 examples of better things that he'd seen in museums somewhere um and he also recognized that the best going was a moving target and um, he wasn't shy about expressing his opinion. Never. And his photographic archives, let's see if I can get close in on this one. Yeah, maybe. It's there a, it is. That's from uh, Ica, right? Atacamite in gypsum? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love this piece. Bill, tell me the locale again, please. Uh, this is from Peru, uh, from the- Ica. Ica. Yeah, Ica. <laughs> I believe he has the, yeah, the lily mine. You have to take your, we have, sorry, we have stickers on everything. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Well, we better keep going through some of the drawers because, you know, as we know, it's hard to get through all of Rock's material, even if you're, moving at a good pace and you've I'm got sure a drawer or two to go through yeah <laughs> well there's just a few rocks in here oh, a small turning mm -hmm. looks like the color on that's fantastic and let's see if we can you, you can kind of see through the ring light it's uh, just kind of green. <laughs> almost looks like a monster Peridot from Afghanistan. That's Bar de Salinas. Here's a Wolfenite, an old one that Rock has because it's number 1156 from mm -hmm. Slovenia at the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at how fat those crystals are and the sort of multiple growth phase almost looks pyromorphite esque. Wow. And then he went to China. So here's, I'm going to reach in and hand this to Bill. But the wonderful hematite included quartz. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's clean. Wow. There, there's the label. Let's see what else we have down this way. A 
about a manganite? How about a small manganite specimen? Mm. Oh, it's tiny. Thumbnail, practically. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, from the Harz Mountains. Rock, Rock, Rock did not discriminate. He had everything from micromounts to bigger than your head. Oh, and if you want more wolfenite, this oh, one not. is a, a tiger wolfenite. Oh, wow. With those clean blades on it, too, it looks like. How old, mm -hmm. a, how old a piece is that based on his collection? Them? Real old. It's 1082. Mm -hmm. Probably in the early 70s, if I remember correctly. And probably, I'm looking, he, he had details. Oh, 68. 1968. Traded for it. Leon Owen. Who was probably so, a miner at Tiger. <laughs> yeah. So if Rock had information he would literally put it in his notes i mean i really wish all collectors would do this who he got it from who had it before he also liked weapons <laughs> <laughs> but not pistols <laughs> yeah <laughs> from cole Wasty in the uh, republic of congo We sold a large uh, Kelly Smithsonite at the auction, but we still have others. Wow. Classic Great. form. Oh. oh, and I need to mention while we're looking at all of these things, there was a rule, and I don't know why, but rock never cleaned a rock. So you're looking at things that are basically as he popped them in the drawers when he accessioned them. And this... It's just a little bit of a phosgenite. From Italy, 574. So this dates to the 60s. Wow. It's never been cleaned. He just put it in his collection. In fact, you can tell on it, it's got the old yellowed yeah, the handwritten label on the corner. Yeah. Wow. We also sold the, the big brother of this one at the auction. Oh, wow. Oh, I love that. So it's a Smithsonian cast from Burgaucus. I love the colors. I love the, I, I, I noticed the, the Lorocanite there. Where is that from? Cornwall, Truro. <laughs> yep, Cornwall, and it's real early. Number 968. Mm. Great color. Hard to paint. Oh, that's a small lead yeah. hole. Yeah, just a little one. So he had a bunch of stuff from Mammoth, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at the label on this one. He got, oh, excuse me. There's a little provenance on this. It's at Fred Poe. He acquired it in 1968. And I think Rock's a really great example of relationships leading to a better collection, right? Yeah. With the Montgomery and Poe material. And this is just a nice little anglocyte oh, from Burgaucus. Yeah, I mean, when we first started working for Rock in the 70s, that's how we got to know so many mineral people in the community because all the dealers would come to Rock's house and, you know, they'd sit and jaw about this, that, and the other thing. And we were just young collectors at the time, and it was like a wonderful way to learn about everything. And this is Tuisit. Wow. Morocco, Wolf and I. With good luster and good color and good composition. Yeah, mm -hmm. the composition on that's great. It makes a beautiful V kind of leading your eyes up and out and over and looks clean too. Mm-hmm. And of course more more dioptase. Never enough dioptase. Mm. And on the cal side with that contrast. 
Nice big crystals. Oh yeah, we used to. There was there. We have a picture of rock where he has flats of dioptase taller than he is, and uh, saying something. Basically, yeah, and it it, it went to the ceiling. <laughs> What's the big thing in the center? Which one? Oh, uh, this one? Yeah. That's a Frizzington barite. Right, yeah. From the collection of Earl Calvert. So and although he, he would have he would have things for sale if he when he bought collections, if he liked it, he'd just throw it in his. Yep. This is another English. All right. Wow, look how long that is. It's long, terminations looks good, and the color's good too. And it's jemmy at the top. Yeah. And I like the sidecar in the bottom. And it's doubly terminated. That's a cool piece. Oh, okay, let's I would see. spend all day in each drawer, but <laughs> have to keep moving. Uh, let's see what else we got. Just a small apocalypse. He spent a lot of time in the Pune area, didn't he? He was one of the first, along with Rusty Kotavala, to open minerals up in India and bring it to the United States. We're now working with third and fourth generations of people like the Makis, who uh, he originally contacted back in the 70s. Wow. So, you know, you talk about long time relationships, definitely. There's another Frisington. And this one is a, a box, box. box piece. Mm -hmm. Oh. And we sold it. Go ahead. I was going to say, Rock would wasn't shy. He'd have duplicates, triplicates, dozens. I love this piece so much. Yeah, Blackbird Vivianite. Oh. Yeah, is this the one that's on the nail? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's still on the nail, Lauren. We're not taking it off. So no, of course not. It should never piece. come off the nail. That is, I love that piece so much. <laughs> Oh, look at the cutie. Yeah. You know what? Oh, Freiburg. Sorry. Freiburg. Very early, number 621. What is specimen number one? It was probably one. one... It was a Ulexite spear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. I was going to ask that question, but I didn't want to stump anybody live, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> oh, I, th I think Bill made up something just fine. <laughs> no, that, that, that's exactly what it was. His first pieces were ulexite and, and boron minerals. Mm -hmm. This is kind of interesting because you can see the inclusions in let me see if i can get close enough can you see that pie right in there yeah, yeah. and the inclusions out that have oxidized and, the, and those are the oxidized ones on the outside so he had a huge inclusion collection as well is that yes he did what, what's happening with that well see over there there's this case <laughs> of <laughs> flats <laughs> okay. we haven't gone through them all yet I don't know, Bill, we want to see if we can pop out an inclusion since Lauren has asked. Oh, come on, I, get to work. Use both hands or something. No, not that one. Let's see here. Six hours later. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you some pretty rocks that are on the table in the meantime. 
How about that rutilated quartz sphere? Wow. So fine. And oriented. Yeah, it's so you the... clean. Anything else in that box? Let's see what else is in the box. Well, that's a Laramar, but this one, if you want inclusions. If I can get it out of here. Holy guacamole. Wow. He spent yeah, a lot like of He's been a lot of time in Brazil, right? Yep. Wow. Oh, I guess we have to get back to the minerals too, huh? Well, there's a few on the table. We just kind of open, we're, we're always opening flats to find out what we've got. And we're gonna have to do research, things like this, no label. <laughs> It's Chinese, though. It's Chinese, but it was in a in a uh, flat of things that he just hadn't gotten around to accessioning yet. So wow. part of our job is to just research what's going on. Here's one of those cute little fluorite. Let's see if I can get it in focus for you guys. There we go. Oh wow, and that's a really good indicator. From China. He, does, he didn't clean anything. It, it showed up and he stuck it in the box. Yeah, exactly. Really looks like someone dancing. <laughs> oh, nice. Wow. Thank you for yeah. resisting that vertical movement, Mary. <laughs> That's going to make everybody dizzy. <laughs> You can see what the treasure hunt is like. We just open box after box after box. Well, I think we can make a new show. Let's see what's in Rock's box. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a Mozambique slice. That is cool. And this is something you usually see sliced up, but he got he kept it intact. Nice. Oh, yeah. Down in Argentina. We got a he has a Smilodon tooth that looks like in the background with some. Oh, yep. hold on. Where did he get that? See if there's information on the label. La Brea Tar Pits. No, wait, hang on. <laughs> from Ed Sloboda. I knew it was familiar. I knew I recognized that. <laughs> it's from your dad. Totally. It's from when you, he rock, got all the miscellaneous stuff in your dad's shop. This was in there, Brian. Okay, this drives me nuts because my dad gave me that, and of course I lost it. I didn't know he probably <laughs> sold it to Rock. Or sold well, it to Rock. <laughs> yeah, then he sold it to Rock. Oh, that and is Rock hilarious. Rock liked it so much, he accessioned it. <laughs> and Rock liked everything. So lapidary, minerals, these are just sets of agates that he had cut that he decided he liked. So he kept them instead of selling them. Marvelous. We were missing a couple of drawers uh, back there, weren't we? Uh, yeah, we can go back to the drawers. Oh. Here's some stuff that was just sitting out while Bill goes and opens the drawers. Remember, the, remember this one? Peter, when that find was done in Mexico? Oh, yeah. Black tourmalines? Mm -hmm. mm. All right. We're going back to a drawer. The famous jackrabbit pocket that he and Bob Barge collected. Oh, yeah. And, of course, he couldn't spell rabbit right, so he has on his labels. I don't know if we can show it. Uh, R E B B E T. But we well, looked at the clay papers speller. recently, and it is jackrabbit like we would spell jackrabbit. It's just that Rock didn't spell it right. Oh, if you like pink. Here you go, Lauren Pink. Oh, that is a cutie. And it's lustrous, too. Yeah. From Katanga. Mm hmm. Would, I like the little. The little uh, sidecar. 
sidecar and the little green ball on it. That's a small Amazonite. Nice twin. Yeah. From Ethiopia. We sold its big brother at the last auction. This is the little one. <laughs> we, we saw granddad when we were in Chenzhou a, a year and a half ago. They There was a guy there who had Amazonites from that locality that were two feet across and three feet tall. Unbelievable stuff. If you like rock forming minerals, how about a little magnetite with fluorite? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Nice sharp crystals there. Mm -hmm. And then one of the more recent classics. Mm hmm. From China. Version. Yeah. Uh huh. And why have just one manganite? Well, if you can have that one too, I... yeah. Where's that one from? Hard Mountains. That's Hard Mountain too. Okay. Oh, yes. What else do we have in the drawer? Oh, this is fun. Here's something fun. Smithsonite on Coronadite from Broken Hill. Broken Australia. Hill, yeah. Oh, yeah. Both sides. And it looks like, uh, in terms of labels, there's the rock hand painted label, there's an older collection label. Yeah. From somebody, and rock's more modern type label but he was fastidious about keeping all the collection information. Mm -hmm. Which is so important. And it's the reason, you know, that his, it's one of the reasons why he was able to help out so much with Mindat was he had that information. Now, so on, now he liked color, just like everybody. Uh, Sumeb and Kelly. Mm -hmm. the, old, the bow tie ones from Kelly. On Matrix, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Should we go for another drawer? You want another drawer? Yeah. You're not tired a, of this? Was that a question? <laughs> <laughs> Rhetorical, I'm sure. Oh, wow. That's a great a yellow. Yep, that's the Meekle Mine. Casey Jones. Big blades. Yeah, it's one of the biggest I've seen. And Rock never had, he really didn't like those custom newfangled bases. So you didn't get any of those either. A yeah, little piece from uh, uh, Casa Polka or? Once a lot. Let's see. He calls it this one alone. That's interesting. I have to, don't remember crystals that big out of Wadon. Which is probably why he kept it because he hadn't seen them either that large. Yeah. They're huge. Looks Ooh. like the stuff from Piedras Verdes Chihuahua. Oh, a little cute. Little pyrites in a the pocket there. That's probably why he kept it. Yeah. <laughs> And he liked his pyrites, of course. Oh, yeah. He had one or 2,000 of them, didn't he? Yeah, just about as many as he had Molly uh, Prenites. Mm -hmm. Somebody once asked him why he had so many of one particular thing or another. His answer was because he could. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why did you climb the mountain? Because it's there. Well, like, here's another one of the, the pyrites. Mm -hmm. And it, look at it. I'm going to get in. It's a knob. Oh, wait, that's actually connected to it. I thought that was a second yes. piece. Nope, it's a knob. Wow. Which, which is why, again, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. And so he could. He used to, he used to he let all of us help him unwrap when he got these shipments in. <laughs> and then you'd 
show him the things that you liked. And then he'd say, thank you for unwrapping them. And he put it in his pile. Hey, Mary, we've got about five minutes left. I know you've got something you want to share with us at the end of the show. So just heads up. Okay. Nice little flux cerusite. Hmm. Intact. Mm. Again, not clean. Not nothing. This is just as he put it in the box. Delina stalactite covered in smithsonite from Sumer. Wow, that's cool. Now, I guess we should go on to the piece we've been keeping in the dark. Now, literally, this has been kept in the dark since Rock got it into the States. It's just exactly Whoa. as it's been. That's all Realgar. It's been kept out of the light. I wish you could see Lauren's face. She thought, it were, she, she, she thought it was a Proustite to begin with, and then she realized it. <laughs> <laughs> Which you would also keep in the dark. Wow. wow. And that's an older piece too, right? Yeah. Probably early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Or 19... So red. 19, yeah, it's so red. And it's because he just literally got them in, and then he put them in the safe. Mm -hmm. And you would only occasionally get exposed to the light. Look at the size of the crystals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're bigger than your thumb. Or as big as your thumb in some cases. And the yeah. calcite association, too. Yep. And some on the back. Wow. Thank you so, so much for sharing that. And yeah, thanks for keeping it in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, for those who don't know, it would turn into an orange powder. And we'd lose it forever. So but that's that the other on. thing about preservation. Yep. Wow. Get the lid back on that baby. So, Brian, we really appreciate. Oh, see, he'd like a little bit of color. Here's more of his Amazonites from his pocket. And I think <laughs> they're a little heavy. Oh, wow. You can see why when people ask, is there anything left of Rock's collection, we kind of laugh. Because we've been yeah. diligently trying to get these out to people. But there's just a lot of rocks here. Oh, I actually like this one. It's really cute. And the crystals are rather elongated for the locality. Mm -hmm. How do you like, Lauren, how do you like to go field collecting in one summer and find all this stuff? That was in one summer? Yeah. Uh, it was, I can't remember, something like four to six weeks. That's it. <laughs> wow. And in fact, that's where Rock first met Brian Lees. Brian was a student at the time and he came out and checked out the claim. Wild. Just a small fluorite. Some interesting zoning. Yeah. Beautiful color, sort of a great sea foam. Yeah, and this is fairly early in his China travels as well. All he has is Hunan. Yeah, Rock basically went all over. He's probably the most prolific traveler that we know of, unless you know somebody else, Peter, in terms of worldwide mineral collecting. Because he went everywhere he thought he might find a mineral. Yeah, he, Mary, used, to, he used to talk about, about having the world's biggest collection of Pepto-Bismol bottles or milk of magnesia. <laughs> 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 Mary, we've got about half a half a minute left. Um, is there anything you want to share in terms of um, what you're planning on doing with the collection? How people can acquire pieces? Do they get in contact with you? Do they keep their eyes out for auctions? What's the strategy here? Okay, you get a hold of us Instagram or at the Rock Courier uh, Crystals Not Pistols on Facebook. We're at the Rock Courier Collection, and essentially. We are, we will make announcements if 
with what we're going to do in 2022. Otherwise, we're selling online and we're selling at the rock dot show right now live. So we're putting up listings there. But as far as the stuff in the safe, it's going to take us a while to uh, catalog and get that ready for either an auction or a major sale. But we will be letting people know what we do. I just we just need to find time. I mean, we right. are still facing disposition of all of this material. Right well, Mary, incredible. Thank you and Bill for sharing everything with us. Uh, for those of you watching, keep in touch with Jewel Tunnel Imports and Hopefully, we're going to see some of those things come to market little by little, and maybe you, too, can grab one of those fabulous pieces we saw. Mary, Bill, thanks again for sharing, and for all of our viewers, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few minutes with our next guest. Thanks, Brad.